Hi everyone and welcome to the ProBuilder 2.0 Triggers, Zones, and Collision tutorial. So in this tutorial we'll take a quick look at how you can use ProBuilder to very simply set up trigger zones and collision. Uh, we'll start right out with triggers. Uh, these are something that um, really came over from my use in Hammer and UDK. Uh, and it's just something you can use so that whenever, say, a player walks through a certain area or uh, onto an elevator, all sorts of things, or an enemy as well, anything like that, uh, it, as it sounds, triggers a separate action. And a lot of times people do this, uh, they might not call it quite the same thing, but you'll usually create, like, let's say, a cube here. And then you'll take the tedious time to kind of stretch and somehow, you know, get it to fit in this area or something and then figure out that you know set it as a uh, set, give it a collider and set the collider to be just the trigger type right and then you have to make sure and turn it on and off so it's not showing in your actual game and this can just be a lot of pain and trouble and doesn't uh, always work as well as it, uh, you'd hope so with ProBuilder you can do this much simpler just drop in a regular ProBuilder cube control K as usual set this up here and then build it out just like you would anything else to the size that you need your trigger to be so let's say let's say we do want it to be so when the player walks into this little valley here uh, between staircases we set off something maybe a, a light or a bomb who knows what it might be so we have the box this is the area that uh, when the player walks in we're going we're going to set off a script and we want to turn this into a trigger so simply hit the T key on your keyboard and now we have a trigger as you can see it has this slightly see-through orangish material on it and this is about the same color as the trigger uh, that we see over here in the viz groups panel and not to give too much away for that upcoming tutorial but basically if you click on it you can toggle its visibility on and off very simply uh, also if we go in game and hit play the trigger instantly disappears so this is very handy in that you can build and set up all your triggers and not worry about any of them accidentally still appearing in game so uh, good way to set these up you can easily put together all sorts of things with that um, just be aware that if you turn them off before hitting play they are gone and they won't be active in game so make sure they're on before you build out your game or hit play uh, something else you can do with this is by creating zones basically so in a map like this you probably want to kill anyone who falls off the edge you don't want to have to uh, figure out anything fancy for that so we'll just do something like this and create some zones on the outside in fact to make it simple we could just create one giant zone and we can pretty well say something like this if the player happens to land in it then we want to kill them <laughs> well we certainly don't want to but that's what's happened at this point <laughs> uh, okay hit T turns into a trigger and now you just sign your script to it that you know checks for player collision if so then knocks them out so very simple to do um, handy for that it's most handy for specialized cases like this where you need it to be in a certain area and you really want to uh, you know have the control over it to build it up to fit exactly with minimal trouble to yourself so very handy for putting those together uh, next on the list would be the collision I'm going to just delete these triggers since they serve no purpose yet now let's say I actually wanted to be kind on this map and make sure that the player could not go flying off the edge of the map. A simple way to do this would just be to create same as we did with the triggers just a regular box 
and set it up. Actually, we probably want this to be on the outside. Just set it up so that the player can't fall out. Or perhaps just this specific area. We didn't want uh, anyone to fall out. And once again, if you were to do this using the, let's say, a cube, even with ProGrids helping, but let's say, worst of all, if we didn't have ProGrids, it's a bit of a pain getting this to fit. Moving around, yada yada. So anyway, with the Pro Builder, you can very quickly set up uh, a little box or whatever you might need to uh, be collision, and then simply hit C on your keyboard, and it turns into a collision area. And this will simply block anything from going through it. It'll also accept raycast and so forth. It's very simply a mesh with a collider on it, uh, but it's very easy to place. And of course, as soon as you enter play mode, it disappears. As well as in the viz groups panel, you can toggle them on and off to hide them if you don't want them getting in the way of your level as you're building. A lot of times you don't necessarily need to see those, they're just kind of there. Collision volumes are also very handy for creating specialized collision areas. Say for example, you created a staircase here. Uh, we'll put one over here on the side, actually. So if I drop in a quick staircase, we'll make it, oops, not 35, certainly. 3 by 3 by 3. Drop this in. something like that. So let's say you had the staircase or any other complex geometry and you really don't need it to have all of this complicated um, collision on it. It's just going to, number one, give the player that nasty bumpy feeling as they're going down. It might even stop them at some point from going up if they get snagged on it. And it's just not good for performance. So we can create a custom collision volume for that. Create a new cube. and move it around to be about where we need. If at some point you are trying to see through it and you can't, remember you can always just make it a collision before it's fully ready to be, no matter. It, of course, automatically updates the collision, and there we have it. Of course, you'd also want to select the actual uh, the mesh item and make sure and turn off its mesh collider so you don't have double colliders going on there. And now, if the player were to run up and down this, it would feel like a simple slope, but of course, they'd be running up the actual staircase. You'd be saving on performance, and uh, in general, your game is much happier. So that's another handy use for it. One more thing you can do with this is, let's say you had a bit of an extruding, uh, extruded item here. For some reason, maybe, maybe this was here. It could be sort of a door, perhaps. And once again, as mentioned in the other tutorials, if sometimes your light maps go a little crazy, just click on the light map button and they'll pop right back in. No worries there. So let's say we have this set up and we want the player as he's running by here. A lot of times in uh, some FPS games that don't have this set up correctly, you can go running by and catch the, uh, the collision box of the player right in the corner of this and get stopped and shot to death or something horrible right there. So it's definitely bad when that happens. It ruins the experience for players. So you want to create something called player clip in this case. 
So easiest way to do this is to select usually the item uh, that's causing the issue, duplicate it, make it a pure collider item, and then in a case like this you probably want to drop it down here so it's not too large. But then just do something simple like this. And we might need to you know, finesse this a bit so it's not quite so much. Um, even just turn off the snap so we can pull this in a bit. And now if the player were to run by here, they're going to be gently pushed aside which they'll probably be you know, attempting to do on their keyboard anyway, but maybe they would normally mess up. In this case, they'll glide right by this. Um, so there's no more getting snagged on that edge. And adding a lot of these in little areas, uh, it's something that I've noticed uh, TF2 maps do a lot. Uh, and it's just little things like that really help to make any game just play much more smoothly and be a, a much better experience overall. So adding in things like that, definitely very helpful to, uh, to your game's experience. So that's really it for collisions and triggers and volumes. Uh, again, just a simple basic overview of these and I'm sure we'll look into doing some more advanced uh, uses of them, but that's essentially it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next ones.